work in this project in collaboration with uh, Paul Yusuf, he is from a medical school. So actually, we have a dream of detecting some kind of diseases a little bit early, and if we do that, we can actually help a lot of people. One of these is Alzheimer, and Alzheimer actually is a very um, progressive disorder, as everyone knows, that affects millions of people around the world. And if we look at the statistics from the government, actually, you find that it is growing. We have uh, more than 800,000 people affected by that. And the projection by 2025, that will be over a million people affected by that. So I think we need to take action. We need to detect this early enough to be able to have any intervention. And this is what we try to do in this project. So the project mainly, we were looking at the typical scenario when we have um, a person have some symptoms and they go to the doctor and they try uh, to find out what is wrong and they do some scans. But if you want to detect this early to allow some kind of uh, drug discovery, that the things that we are actually hearing in the news recently about some drugs that can make the progression a little bit slower by 35%, which is great. But to do that, we need to have this intervention at the right time. And if we don't detect this early, we won't be able to give this medicine to be able to slow down the progression. So what we aim to, to look at some of the data that we don't really have at the beginning. So people without really having any symptoms, or maybe they are at high risk, but they don't know yet they have Alzheimer. How about looking at this data and try to figure out whether there is some signs of early um, uh, detection of Alzheimer, or maybe having more of people at risk of developing this uh, shortly after. So what we looked at is more of the genomic data and protein data, and we looked at demographics, and we looked at some cognitive tests. So we achieved that by trying to employ some of the AI techniques, try to look at each modality by itself, dig deep into that, try to find out whether there is any obvious biomarkers. So we have seen something that we are familiar with, like an age, gender, we have seen some signs of that. We also have seen that some cognitive tests are better than others, and that was helpful. We have also seen some uh, genomic sequence that are related to the early detection of Alzheimer. But I think what we have been noticing that none of this is actually can do the job by itself. It is something that needs more holistic approach of looking at this. And that's where the multimodality approach that we are looking at is coming from. So we try to combine this together with some AI machine learning techniques and try to make sense of the combination of these uh, sources and make sense of you know, that that might be greater um, of the, um, the whole is greater than its own parts. And this has actually made us more promising results when we combine these things together. And we thought that this is really something that can help a more accurate system, can help us more and detect this earlier. And that will help people to have this kind of intervention in the own so they can have better lives for them and for their families. Um, if we detect it early. So, of course, this is a huge project. It's not something that will uh, finish in, in a few months. It will take years, and I'm glad that um, Roche have discussed that how the genomic data is something that they are trying to embed in the system in NHS in the next five years, because this is really something that we can utilize to look at this kind of an early detection of some of the diseases. The thing is how to move forward from there. And what we have, we're thinking of, we have lots of dreams and, and uh, ambitious about that. We're actually looking at the, how this multimodality approach can also adding some of the things that we use every day, your smartwatches, your you know, activities for every day, and adding this, not only medical records, but adding this everyday activity to the kind of a model, the AI model, can help us understand more how the, the disease is progressing or early signs of the disease. Also, we're looking at um, how to enhance the models, make it more transparent and more explainable, because this is obviously a multidisciplinary project when we have people from different disciplines sitting together. And to be able to justify the model, we need to have some more of explainable kind of model to be able to do that. And also we are looking at how this is transferable to other diseases. It's not only about Alzheimer. 
We are also looking at this for cancer and early stage detection of cancer, and specifically if you are looking at the lung and head and neck cancer, and that's something that we are working on as well. And that's the end of my presentation. Happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Um, anyone got any questions? Yeah, Elaine. Hi, that was really interesting. Um, you mentioned that there were some cognitive tests which were more um, effective than others in um, identifying early markers. I was just wondering if you had any more information on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think uh, it's meant, not meant to be very technical. That's why I just write. <laughs> so I think we, we had um, the, the, the naming of the some tests, and it's all in the blog post on the, on the website. But I think that the idea here is they're not all the same. They are actually based on some of the um, initial kind of literature that has been updated over time. And I think this kind of research is more a data-driven thing. So maybe what has been known in the literature when you've done some experience, you'll find that it's a very different pattern. But also the thing is we have been trying this in a different domain. So maybe this domain, uh, that this is actually have something specific that will make these cognitive tests more uh, kind of uh, relevant than the others. Uh, so I can refer you to the specific names of the test, but this is uh, just the idea. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, that's me. Thank you very much. So as far as I understand, one of the greatest difficulties with this type of research is just getting the data. Um, I was just wondering that are there any efforts from, I don't know, the NHS, the government, or some, some sort of higher body to have better and perhaps automated ways to anonymize data? Because as a data scientist, obviously, you don't care about yeah. a lot of things of that data but you just have to go through this tedious process mm -hmm. of getting something done that you don't need in the first place. I was just wondering, do you know if there's, is, is it going to be something that's going to be solved so this, this type of data will be yeah. available easier? This is, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. It's, um, it's challenging, it's very challenging. I think for the Alzheimer, we are lucky to have the ADNI and i um, here. So they, they are actually, it's, it's an initiative. They try to collect as much data as possible for multimodalities, and this is really something helped us to do this research. But for example, in the cancer research that I'm working on as well, it is really hard because we are collecting some saliva samples. We are trying to make it ourselves, and this is terribly hard. So I think that we need, it's not a research team effort, it's a government effort, and it is you know, around the world. It's not only in the UK. I think that we'll need much more if we're putting, putting this data as a benchmark and allowing people to do their research on it. So this is definitely a huge obstacle, but we try to, so ADNI is one of the great initiatives in doing that, but we hope to find more and more of that. Thank you. Thank you. Any, oh, yes, yeah. Will has a question. <laughs> Hi, I was just wondering um, whether this is kind of, this can be useful for sort of picking like different genomic sequences that might have different, effect, different effects on different cognitive tests for different kinds of Alzheimer's. That sort of that sort of separation of quite a complex sort of cluster of things yes. at different levels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you have you have touched on a very important thing. It's not one thing that fits all. There are different kind of biomarkers for different people for different kinds. Of, so th there is, of course, kind of complexity in knowing that. And I think the important thing here, and that's why we mentioned the explainable one, to really understand what are the biomarkers that we are looking at that get us to the decision that these people or this person have an early uh, signs of Alzheimer's. So I think that you are absolutely right. It's not something that can fit on all people. We just need to customize it for different profiles for patients, if it makes sense. That's right. Thank you very much. Great. No, no, of course, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.